Hi guys, today I thought I'd show you how to make a um, faux boulder opal. Um, the one that I got inspiration from was the Australian boulder, boulder opal. Um, and some of them are highly polished right down to the different colours of the opal, but others that I saw had like a brown crackled effect still left on the stone so I'm going to do it that way um, so what you're going to need is a, a thin sheet of antique bronze this is rolled onto a number six this will be for the the crackle effect that I'm going to put on top of the opal itself um, I've rolled out some translucent on a number one for the backing you're also going to need um, kind of rainbowy colours so I've got um magenta pearl magenta pearl bright green um, peacock blue and copper and they're going to be turned into a Skinner blend I've also got some primo opal clay so it's actually got all the glittery bits in there um, some white mica powder this is pearl white mica powder liquid sculpey um, and also not absolutely necessary but if you want that extra glittery look then um, some glitters and I've got extra fine glitters and this one is blue a purple one this one's hot pink um, this one, I don't know, what's this one called doesn't actually say on what it is Oh, crystal, crystal glitter it's called and it's slightly bigger pieces than the extra fine one and it kind of matches the glitter in the opal clay like I said it's not absolutely necessary um, and I've, I've also got some green glitter as well so some glitters, some white mica powder colours to make a Skinner blend, liquid clay opal clay and the bronze clay for the crackle Right, so first thing first, I'm just going to make these into a Skinner blend and I just take my pieces of clay and roll them into little teardrops and then just place them together, one pointing up, one pointing down so opposite directions on each colour, so up, down, up, down and just push those together I'm just going to move these out of the way a little bit to give me more room so this is how I do my Skinner blend. Now I will say um, I saw a tutorial by Gail Thompson where she showed you how to do an Aurora Borealis cane. Now this is the cane I'm going to do purely because the colours look perfect to me for this technique. So like I say this, this cane goes to, the credit goes to Gail Thompson for this cane and I will leave you the link but I'm, I'm going to quickly show you how to do it anyway so you just need a Skinner blend so you do your little, little pointy things and then put them together roll them through the pasta machine until you get a nice blend I'll just roll this one quickly So you're just going to keep doing that and you're going to be folding the same direction each time. So I'm just going to go and finish this blend and I'll be back. So I've done my blend but we're going to make it into a bullseye cane so we need to make it into a thinner strip. And all you do is you just fold colour to colour until you've got a piece like this. And then just give it a little squish and then I'm going to put it through the pasta machine going through like this and it needs to be quite thin so I'm probably going to roll it to a number six so when I've done that I'll be back I've got my long strip here so it goes from the the pink all the way through 
to the coppery colour at the end with a nice blend in between and you're just literally going to take that and roll it into a bullseye so just take start with the end and just start to roll like I say I wanted to use this cane um, because just the whole concept of it meant I could get that opal colour look so I'm so glad I came across it um, and it also means that you get a little bit of each colour in the um, individual pieces of the faux opal. You'll see what I mean when I do it because we're going to chop it up. So just roll. Until you've got a plug like this. I'm just going to give it a quick squish. Make sure there's no air bubbles in there. Just push those air bubbles out a little bit and give it a quick roll. And when you've done that, you just need to take <coughs> individual slices like this. So going downwards into the cane and you're just going to get this really cool look. So I just need a few slices for the um, opal that I'm going to make. So I've got my slices and like I say it's incorporating all those different colours which is what we want. And the next thing is to take these pieces and just start to randomly chop them up. Some bigger pieces, some smaller pieces. Oops. I'm wondering if that might be enough actually. You can make as much of this as you want, but I don't want to make a massive amount because I've already made um, quite a bit of this just with practicing before I did the tutorial, so Oh, whatever. I'll use this slice as well. So when you've got your, your pieces all chopped, you're then going to add some of the opal. And just the same thing, just chop it up. Like with um, most of the faux stones, they're all a similar technique. It's just about... Um, changing things up a little bit, changing the colour and how much translucency you use, whether there's going to be any kind of veining in it or not. This doesn't have any veins in it, but all the ones I've done anyway, they're all very similar, which you've probably already figured that one out. So, so just give that a good mix up. I want to leave the opal pieces a bit chunkier. I'm just going to add a little bit more actually. Get some smaller pieces too. Just throw it into the mix. This is going to make quite a big block actually. I didn't really want to make this much. Oh well. Okay, so I think I'm happy with that. So, you know, just chop until you're happy. But I want to keep some of the opal pieces a little chunkier. Then the next thing is to take your um, mica powder. And I've just got the pearl white. You could even add different colours of uh, mica powders if you wanted to. 
I'm just going to go with the white though. I'm just going to tap something. I want a fair amount. Oh, I emptied the jar, so that's all I'm going to put in. <laughs> Right, so that's the powder, and then I'm going to add some little sprinkles of glitter, so I've got the purple. Don't need too much of this, it's just to add a little bit more sparkle. And then I've got the hot pink. And then some blue. Sure, if it's a specific blue, but it really doesn't matter. Any kind of blue, and then I'm adding some of this chunkier stuff, which is um, a mix of white and little flecks of pink. And then, guess what, guys? You know what's coming next, don't you? Yep. Yeah the liquid clay and it's going to get messy because I don't wear gloves and I don't put it in a bag I just like to do it like this you can put it in, in, in a bag if you want and shape it in the bag if you don't want to get messy but I really don't care I like getting messy so that's how I do it so I'm just going to mix all that together and while I'm doing that I just want to say a few words I recently reached 3,000 subscribers <clears throat> I'm just so thankful to all of you that have subscribed to my channel. I honestly didn't think it would take off like it has done. Um, I mean, I did start doing tutorials a year ago, but I literally did like three and then didn't do any more. And at the point of me um, starting to do tutorials more regularly, I only had like 380 subscribers. So in the space of five months, I've gone from 300 and something to just over 3,000. So I just want to say thank you so much everybody um, for subscri subscribing and thank you for some of the wonderful comments that you leave. I really do appreciate it. Oh, I've got a big lump in my throat now. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on. I'm just going to add a little bit more of this because it's not sticking just yet. So. Just make sure it's all nicely covered. And then we want to see if it's going to start sticking together. I'm just going to pick it up and start forming it in my hand. Just gentle squeezes. This is not as messy as some of um, the other faux stones that I've done. mainly because it hasn't got the gold um, mica powder in it and this is just the white stuff so it doesn't look as disgusting I'm just going to go off camera for one minute guys, my um, humidifier just kicked on, I don't want you to hear the background noise, I'll be back. Okay that's that sorted, um, that happens to me almost every time I start doing a tutorial I either forget to turn off the air conditioning, because I'm in my basement as you probably know and um, the air conditioning unit is down here and the, the furnace and everything else for the heaters and I've also got a dehumidifier down here and I nearly always forget to turn one or the other off. Today it was the dehumidifier. Anyway, get a little bit cleaned. So I've got this rolled into a little ball at the moment and we just need to shape it into a, a usual square block. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm just going to get a towel which fell on the floor and dry my hands a bit okay so right so let's just form this into a block oops 
Oops. Try this a bit as well. Now the other thing I wanted to mention is the volume issue that I had in my earlier um, videos. I'm pretty sure it's sorted now because I got a new microphone. Um, I alter the volume on the app before I upload it. So I'm hoping all is good now. Um, I have noticed that I do tend to talk a little quiet so I am trying to speak a bit louder. But I'm hoping all is good. Right, so we've got this block ready to cut. I'm going to take a fairly thick slice. And that's what you've got so far. I'm just going to clean my hands. Wipe my blade. Why do I always do such messy techniques? That's what I want to know. I think I honestly prefer um, surface techniques in this kind of technique um, because it is more kind of. Um, rustic and spontaneous and I think that's why I struggle so much with canes because you have to be so precise with those and I don't have the patience I'd rather do something that you can put together um, not haphazardly but it's a little bit more rustic and organic that's just me I have been working on my canes but I might actually show you one that I made one of these days we'll see Okay, so I've got my slice. I'm just going to get my backing um, piece of translucent here, put it on some card, and just roll this on there. Now you could either leave it like this cut it out and bake it, resin it, or sand it and buff it, whatever you want to do. But like I said at the beginning, I've seen photographs of this Australian boulder opal where it's kind of, the opal is inside a almost crusty looking shell type thing. It looks like crackle. So I thought I'd do that, just leave some of that um, outer shell, so to speak, on the opal. You can look it up yourself and you'll see what I mean. Actually, I'll probably just leave a, um, a photograph as part of the, the video so you can see what I mean, where I got my inspiration. But anyway, that's that on there. And I've got my little piece of um, antique bronze. You, you really don't need a lot. Obviously, it depends how many pendants you're going to make, but just for one pendant, you don't need a lot. And it's rolled out onto a number six, so it's fairly thin. And you're going to need a heat gun. Um, I'm not going to show you all the way with the heat gun because it's too noisy. But just so you get a general idea of how close you need to hold it, I'll just quickly show you. So if you don't like the noise, now's a good time to switch up, switch down your volume. One, two, three. So you can see I'm holding it fairly close. I don't know if you can tell with the angle, but it's fairly close to the clay, not touching it. And I'm just going to do that and you just, just go over it like this for about a minute. Um, you can check it after 30 seconds, see how it's doing. If it needs more than do another 30 seconds, just keep checking it um, to see if it's giving you the crackle you want. So I'm going to go and do the rest of that off camera because it is really noisy and I'll be back. So I ran the um, heat gun over this for about a minute and I rolled it one way and rolled it another and this is the crackle I've got so far. Um, I'm just going to lift it and 
see if I can crack a little some more and it doesn't matter if it falls apart because you're going to be breaking pieces off to put on the um, opal anyway yeah that's better I just wanted little tinier crackles than that now, I'm not going to cover the whole piece with this I just want little hints of it here and there um, some of the pieces I saw, there was a lot of the outer crust, I mean I don't know what else to call it, shell crust, left on the stone. But there was other ones that I saw where there was only little bits left where more of it had been removed. So I'm just going to just take little pieces of it, like this, and just maybe try and separate it a little bit. And then just start to place it over your um, stone like this like I said I don't want too much I think that's good. I think that's all I want to put on. Maybe just a little. Oops. Maybe just some little pieces here. And that's all I'm putting on. But it just gives you that um, look that I was telling you about. Okay. And then my blade, and then I'm just going to roll those pieces into there so they're nicely stuck in there. And that's really all there is to it. Try and break it up a little bit more just by stretching the clay. And I also want to give this a quick clean with some alcohol. Just get rid of some of that residue um, liquid, liquid Sculpey clay. I'm just going to take my shape. Like I say, you can put as much of this crackle on as you want, or you don't have to put any on. But um, I did find that most of the Australian boulder opal had some of that left on there. So I'm just cutting out my piece. And I'll put this in the oven and bake it and then give it um, a sand on the edges and then um, I'll come back and show you some of these little um, crackly bits stick out just you can just push them back in so that's what it looks like so far it doesn't look like much does it but um, it will be sanded on the edges and then it will get resined and um, I'll be back to show you. Guys, while I, um, the other ones are in the oven, I thought I would show you the other way that I did it actually. I wasn't going to, but I thought I might as well give you options and then you can decide which way you prefer. So I've just cut out another slice of the um, faux opal and placed it on my backing and just rolled it out. And what I did 
the first time I did this, I actually did, I actually used this, I showed you this before, it's what I call my, the matrix stamp. Um, and it's just a piece of clay and I've um, used a ball tool, let me just get a ball tool to show you, and just impressed that into the clay and baked it and that is all you do and that, that's the stamp. And it was Kalyana, um, Kalyana Designs, she did the tutorial for that. I couldn't remember who did it last time I showed you, um, but yes, it was her. Um, so I actually tried it that way too, so I thought I would quickly show you how I did that. So I've rolled my piece out, put it on some backing clay. I've got me um, a piece of the um, antique bronze. I think I'm going to need a little bit more though, so just give me a second. So yeah, I've got that rolled onto a number six. Oops. And I just placed it over the top of the of the um, the opal and rolled over it just so it's adhered. And then I took this matrix stamp, I don't know what else to call it, and pressed it in there. I was worried that if I showed you this it would be a longer video but I thought do you know what I may as well show you both ways that way you can decide so it's got these bobbly bits now on the surface and you just shave those away but it's going to leave some of that um, antique bronze behind This isn't going to have the crackle on it, but it's it's still going to leave um, lines of the the bronze, and you can take away as much as you want, or you can. But you're just shaving the top of those bobbly bits off, and that way you've got like um, a matrix the lines running through. I, I like a bit more showing through so I'm going to shave some more off. So just keep doing that until you're happy. And um, that's just the other way that I did it. So I'll leave you the link to Gail Thompson's Aurora Borealis cane tutorial and I'll leave you the link to Kalyana's tutorial on making these matrix stamps. Um, but yeah, that's that's another way of doing it, but you're not going to have the crackle, but you're still going to have the you know remnants of the bronze running through the piece. Um, just a quick roll just to make sure it's nice and smooth and a burnish And then just cut out your piece and bake. That's just another way of doing this. Doesn't have to be perfectly smooth because it's going to get resined. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of this excess. And 
and then get a cutter. I'm just going to use this one. And that's that. So two ways to do it just to get a slightly different look and you can decide which one you prefer. So I'm going to go and put this in the oven along with the other ones and I'll be back. Okay so the pieces have been um, sanded and baked. I did sand around the edges um, so they were nice and smooth, but I also sanded the surface just to get rid of the rougher edges and some of that liquid Scorpio that was showing. And this is what they look like now they've been resined. So these are the ones that I did today. This is the one using the crackle. And then this one using the matrix stamp. So that's from the block I showed you on camera. I just want to show you a few other... Um, variations. This is another one that I did exactly the same way but um, I actually added some purple into the Skinner blend which I personally prefer. So if you prefer the purple um, do the colours that I already used so go um, uh, let me think magenta, purple, blue, green, copper and that's that look and it does have more purple in it as opposed to this one exactly the same but like I say I just added purple in this one and I do prefer that so that's those and then the other way that I did it was um, the matrix way like this one but I didn't use the bronze although bronze is more realistic I used copper instead or it might have been gold no I think it was gold um, and I didn't add any glitter into these ones so you know it's just trial and error which you prefer and this is from the same block and this one is from the same block so this had got the purple in the Skinner blend as well using gold instead of bronze and no glitter so there's a few different ways you can do it and you're going to get a slightly different look depending on which way you do it. But that's what they look like. So I hope you enjoyed that guys. Thank you for watching and again thank you so much to all my subscribers and um, I'll see you again soon. Catch you later guys. Bye.